Mick. Hey there. What do you think of the place? Ah, it's incredible. Look at this. <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on? It's been so long. It's been a while, right? Yeah. I very first met Mick before I was in WWE. I met him in early 93, 94, when I first started Super Green in the business. You know, it was Mick Foley who was willing to help a young guy that uh, was just trying to find his way in it. Well, when did you guys start realizing that this was stuff that needed to be archived? Well, we're the caretakers of the business. And of all the stuff we have here, so much we don't. So we're trying to find those things, not because we want to take them away from a collector or something, but if we can take them and then allow the world to enjoy them as opposed to one person with a collection that it just sits in their nightstand. So I'm guessing that if I go out looking for the item myself, it carries a little sentimental value. To carries a little more sentimental value. I believe that if somebody is a Mick Foley or a Cactus Jack fan and Mick Foley or Cactus Jack comes looking for something that they might have, it's more meaningful. Yeah. And I would think also if I'm there in person, I can authenticate. Yeah. Right. Mick, if you could characterize or capture your career using artifacts, what would you see in your tribute case? I see that you have some dude stuff here, but I'd love to see all the characters represented. Yeah. Cactus Jack, we're talking about a vintage flannel vest. Not the one you're wearing. Not, Not the, the one, one I'm wearing. wearing. One Although that I, very similar. That would be a real big find. And as far as mankind, here's the thing. We've got a mask. You know, I yeah. made sure that I shipped the company a mask. Yes. But I'm missing that original shirt. The original Mankind shirt was made from leather. That's out there somewhere. That would be the highest priority item. And the other thing, there are a handful of vintage Sockos out there, and I'd love to be able to track that down. When I debuted as Mankind, I did not know what my name was. Oh, wow. I was given an information packet that just said Mutilator. And I come down to the ring, I hear Mankind. But that's how I got that name. That is cool. Yeah. Yes, here it comes, Mankind oh, on his yeah. way to the ring. Mankind's character is tough to describe. It was as if he had just escaped out of the insane asylum. He would wrestle with his demons in his own mind and then project that into the ring. There are over 740 pressure points in the human body. And during the course of an isolated adolescence, I explored them all. I think it's so important to find the original Mankind shirt because it's a piece of history. It's a piece of a character who many would have thought would have never made it in WWE, who would never have been able to connect with the audience. Stand behind me. I will, yeah. Hey, Jay. Jay. How's hey, it Jay going, Francis. man? Nice to meet you. Nice to finally meet you. I actually brought a surprise. Hope you don't mind. I'm Holy. <laughs> you didn't tell me you were bringing Nick. Yeah. Holy. Holy. Yeah. Oh, I like it, man. We got <laughs> secrets, uh, Come right? on in. Oh, yeah. Right, After you, you, if anybody's going to help me authenticate this uh, Mick Foley merchandise, who's better than Mick Foley? I'll show you where I retire to on the weekends. This is the space. Wow. This is it. This is serenity down here for me. Wow. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. This is like a museum, dude. I try. I'm always adding. I need more mannequins. I got more stuff I want to put up. So I started watching wrestling as a kid with my father, dating back into like the late 80s. And it was these superheroes that are bigger than life on your television screen is, is really what drew me into it all. This is like sensory overload. There's just <laughs> so much cool stuff right now. Part of the reason I got into collecting was to cherish these items, curate them, make sure that they don't go wasted in a box in an attic, end up in the garbage, which I think a lot of stuff does. This is some amazing stuff here. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, there it is. That's the reason. That looks, that looks familiar. There were two of them made, but this is the first one. A slugfest ensuing right off the bat. I went through a lot of trials and tribulations because my first big matches were with The Undertaker. The Undertaker with a chair. Oh! They were really physical matches, a lot of exertion, and uh, as a result, fabric tore quite a bit. That's why I think, yeah, there's some tearing here. Yeah, because it didn't, it wasn't a material that gave. The so the original one is easy to spot because the original is pretty badly torn. And you designed this? I this? just thought Celtic Cross yeah. with an X down below looks kind of mystical or kind of evil. Because I was trying something different. I didn't want mm -hmm. to just be cactus. That's why jack it was with great. Yeah. 
Mr. McMahon, I only found out years and years later. The thing was, Undertaker had uh, broken an orbital bone. He wanted to continue working, but he had to be protected. So they had this gentleman, Stanley Allen Sherman, use one of the WWE designs, which turned out to be that Phantom of the Opera ask mask. One of the designs Mr. McMahon liked but didn't use turned out to be the Mankind mask or a prototype of it. Yeah. So he was looking for someone to fit an idea they already had. So when my name came up, Mr. McMahon said, all right, I'll bring him in but I'm covering up his face. <laughs> <laughs> and this character brought me to greater heights than I ever dreamed. I dreamed big. I never mm -hmm. dreamed this big, though. This yeah. has been crazy. It's an impressive piece. It's one of my favorite pieces. It's one of the first ones I ever got. I came across the Mankind shirt through another collector, uh, but that was one he wasn't really willing to part with. It took me a while to kind of wear him down on it, but I made the right offer and he took it. We're wondering if it's time for Junior to move out of the basement, though. You see how hard I'm staring at it? Like, yeah. I can't imagine my life without it. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to come down here and just offer you a handful of nothing. Oh. $7,500. Oh, gosh. I love that idea, but I don't think I could do it. Huddle over here, huddle up. Okay. The Mankind shirt is a staple to Mick Foley's career because it is the first Mick Foley character that we see in WWE. Mankind is what made Mick Foley a star. And that is all from the time he was wearing that original debut shirt. Why don't we hit him with 75 in the viewing party? Okay. We have a better offer. What if we throw in? a Foley viewing party in your basement. If you're gonna come here, we can watch any pay-per-view. Any pay-per-view you want. I will come here on my own dime, and Mr. McMahon buys the wings and pizza. All right, you got a deal for yes! 7,500. I mean, as long as it's gonna be preserved. Yes. Oh, we're so happy. It's going to a good home. As long as you don't lose it in the airport, it'll be appreciated. That's all that counts, is, is that this stuff gets the attention it deserves. And now I have to fill a new spot in my uh, museum, so the hunt's on for something new. It never ends. Thank you so much, Thank my you, friend. Man. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate that. <laughs>